about built-in history and built-in style. That's this drum. This vault edge snare is such a different kind of animal. I am so pleased with what we're doing with this. You think about how cool the patented edge technology to begin with is, where we put the metals together with a wooden center. Well, this is just no metal. This is the melted down Sabian cymbals that all your favorite artists have been playing for years and years, put into the edge rings themselves. The center of this drum is a birch center which is a 11-ply shell that's cut out to accept these Sabian edge rings. And this, this wood, we found through us, all of the sources that we have here at DW for various different types of woods. This was from Moosehead Lake in Maine. This is around about 700-year-old birch that has been lying on the bottom of Moosehead Lake, clear, cold, cold water for 200 years. So this project has got a number of beautiful things about it. Number one, the cells in this birch are so tight together because it's old growth timber. That means that the, the, uh, the minerals have leached out of the cells and the cells themselves are much smaller than normal wooden cells. So there's that quality about it. It's, it's almost like tiny little echo chambers. Now it's birch, so birch has a very fast vibration and a very focused sound. So you get the musicality of the, of the Sabian cymbals that are melted into the edge ring, and then you get the focus of the birch. The hardware on this drum was inspired from when we did our 40th anniversary drum set, which was a polished, deep, rich pewter plating, which was, you know, a, a very classy, kind of uh, glassy finish on the top of the pewter. Well, I have these sources that were very interested in helping us with this project because this is going to be, you know, you're gonna have one of 50 drums. There's only 50 of these made. And we carefully chose this antique bronze finish, which looks very, very complementary to the edge rings themselves, which are, of course, the Sabian symbol edges. So, you know, the, the whole package here is, is quite a uh, marriage of, of an old look with the flat finish in the birch, I think you're really, really gonna like the way these look. And most of all, I love the way they sound. They've got that beautiful musicality and the focus of the birch all at the same time. The symbol material that we work with, being bell bronze, is extremely, extremely hard around uh, for all you uh, uh, metallurgists out there. It's probably a, a B Rockwell 90 scale, which is a very extreme hard. And you might say, well, why, you know, why just another, uh, another rim? You could have made it out of anything. You could have made it out of brass. Uh, I tested some bronze rings, and bronze 8020 bell bronze rings have some of the fastest transmission speed of sound from the outside rim to the uh, wooden center of a drum. And that is a big, in, uh, uh, in microseconds, you can almost track it. It's a, it's a fast movement, uh, resulting most likely in high-end clarity as, a, as probably opposed to something that slowed the speed down a little bit, giving you more maybe mids or other frequencies, but it was a, a door that we wanted to open just to see what happened using one of the harder materials. I also knew that this material is very lively. So we had to find a third player in there that would take Sabian Metal that I shipped out to California, or a, a, a designation of their choice, and they had it cast. I wrote up some specs for that person that was doing the sand casting, telling them the temperatures to melt it at, uh, the pouring temperatures, and just some uh, enough numbers without giving away any symbol trade secrets that uh, we could get a decent cast uh, of the rims. 
let's talk about a very cool process to make these rings. Now, the Sabian symbols are melted down. I mean, look at how incredible that is. Poured molten metal into a cast from that point. I want to say how cool is that, but it's actually very hot. And, you know, they take this from that point and, and they centrifugally spin it to drive the impurities and the air to the outside. Once that's done, they're machined. And when these are machined, it is done with a very, very high-tech process. And the QC of this is also very, very high-tech. At that point, they are finished, sent to the plater, which is a quasi-plating process because it's really all about sealing in the patina beauty of the, of the ring itself. So we want to preserve that. That's why we do this process. The veneer selection is tedious because there are parts of this log that are really suitable for inner veneers and there are parts that are really snazzy looking, you know, outer face veneer. So we go through a, a pretty lengthy veneer selection because we're going to make the plywood layups. The plywood layups are cross lamination 11 times, so it's an 11 ply shell. So when we make these, these layups, we're making plywood, and then we run it into the, sh to the gluing process uh, for you know, making the actual rolled up shell barrel itself. Then it gets carefully put into the shell presses. Now this shell press is a hot and cold patented process. We call it cool tempered shells. Number one, we roll up the shell and get it into that hot press. It goes under 2,600 pounds of hot 200 degree press. Once it's in there for about five and a half, six minutes, it comes out and it goes into the cold process. And it goes in there and stays in there for about five more minutes. Now, as it's cooling down, this process carefully takes the heat away from the shell evenly. So it's crystallizing the glue as we let it cool down. It's trapped in there under 2,600 pounds of pressure. It literally can't go anywhere. So when it comes out of there, it is round as we can humanly make it, and it is hard as a rock. It has crystallized the glue, so everything is ready to be cut. Once we cut the barrels into various different, you know, sections, we trim off the edges. The next part, of course, is sanding. Sanding in and out carefully to make sure that everything is even and 100% round. Primer coat, we'll, we'll take that and, and, and do it basically three times. We primer coat it, it kind of soaks into the material slightly, let that dry, we sand it, then we do it again, sand it, do it again, and sand it. So you've got three really nice primer coats in there, which is allowing this to be sealed 100%. Now we router out the edges. This routering process is, is very, very tedious because each one of these rings is just a little bit different because once they've gone through all the traumatic being put into this shape from, from the foundry and, and getting into that, that, that uh, opposite shape that we're putting on with the router, we have to fit each one very, very carefully. And in doing so, we wanna make sure we've got ultimate contact between the wood and, and the ring itself. Now, that, that ring is unique to that shell, so we're going to make that ring go with that shell, so we take it apart at that point, now we put it on the drilling machine. We we'll go carefully drilling it with a CNC machine so everything is accurate as can possibly be. Now it's ready for the matte top coat. This is a 
new process, whereas we used to sand that top coat, now we've got this proprietary finish that is a matte top coat. Right from that point, it goes directly to inspection. Now, we want to make sure that this inspection process is as close attention to detail as we can possibly do. At that point, we will take and put the labeling inside. This is important as well. The labeling process is, is unique to that drum because each one is numbered and signed. We go from that process of, of inspection to final assembly. Final assembly is done with putting all the hardware together, reassembling the edge rings that are unique to that shell back to the drum. Once that's all done, we go through the tuning process. We tune every single drum because we want to make sure that everything sounds exactly the way it was intended and constructed. By the time it comes through that process, we know that that drum is singing and ready for you. Standard on this drum is the mag throw off and the three position butt plate. It's got true hoops on it, a hoop that I'm extremely proud of and they're 3.0 hoops. The plating goes from top to bottom through the uh, throw-off system, the butt plate, all the turret lugs. It's got stainless steel tension rods. What's not to like about the features on this drum? So we finally inspect it in the White House. The White House has got all these very, very bright lights just to ensure that we haven't missed anything. And once we've, we've approved it, everything is exactly the way we want it. It goes into this beautiful bag that we've prepared, which is uh, the carrying case for the drum. We're very proud of it. It's got the Sabian logo. It's got the DW logo. We're very proud of this process and this, and this instrument because it marries the two companies that are family-run companies together. And we're very excited to bring this beautiful, beautiful, unique instrument to you. I really love the edge snare. It's got a wonderful throaty quality to it because with a mix of, uh, in the old school, brass rims with uh, the, the wood center. And for some reason, it's a very responsive snare, really great for rock and roll, and just has this wonderful uh, voice to it that uh, I really enjoy. Now this one is a special edition edge snare. The edge part, the metal part, is actually bronze. It's melted down Sabian cymbals uh, from the artist's uh, broken cymbals from the West Coast office. And uh, it has a very special quality to it. There are ways to make this thing really have a very unique voice. And that's what I love about it. The, the response of this drum is incredible. You know, from the edge to the center, you really get a crispness and this, this sort of woodsy, throaty, uh, and, and metally sonic quality that happens with the mix of the, the wood and the uh, bronze. So it also comes with this uh, one-of-a-kind um, antique bronze finish, which is only going to be available on this drum. I remember the first time I played an edge, I think I played about 45 minutes and didn't stop because it just had this wonderful voice to it. This one has the same uh, and even better voice. It's, it's a wonderful drum uh, for collectors and, uh, you know, and it's a beautiful instrument for, for those who really are into sound, so I hope you'll check it out.